This is a GCSE video on electric charge and static electricity. There are two types of charge. You can either have a positive charge or a negative charge. A positive charge and a negative charge, when they're put next to each other, they will be attracted to each other. Opposite charges attract. If you have two negative charges, they repel. And if you have two positive charges, they also repel. So like charges repel, unlike charges attract. Now you also might know from chemistry that electrons have a negative charge. Electrons have a negative charge within the atom and protons have the positive charge. When we're talking about electricity, we're only really talking about electrons. Negatively charged electrons can move around and it is that movement of electrons that creates a charge or creates a current. So if we have two objects in contact with each other and one of them gives all the electrons over to the other one, then this one will become negative and this one will become positive because it has lost electrons. Now we can show that if we have two insulators, this is just a, a piece of plastic tubing and this is just a, a, a jumper, a nylon jumper. So I'm just going to rub the plastic tubing on the jumper. And then you can see that that attracts or repels all these bits of paper because it's got a charge. So what is happening in that example is the electrons from the rod are being transferred to the jumper. And so in that case, this is the rod and this is the jumper. So the electrons are being transferred away from the rod into the jumper. And so the rod is left with a positive charge. And so when we move the rod close to these paper discs, the rod, because it has a positive charge, either attracts or repels the plastic, uh, the paper discs, depending on whether they have a slightly positive or slightly negative charge. And so as we've just seen from those paper discs, if we have something within an electric field, if we have something that has an electric charge, things that come close to that thing with the electric charge experience a force. And an electric field is the force that is on something with a positive charge that comes close to that object. So if this is a charge and this has a positive charge, then anything positive that comes near it will be repelled. If we have a point charge that is negative, anything positive that comes near it will be attracted. And these arrows show the direction of the field, which is the direction of the force on anything that is positively charged that comes close to that object. So another example would be if we had a, a, an orb, a metal orb, which had a negative charge, lots and lots of electrons. So anything positive that came near that would be attracted. So we can draw the electric field like that. Alternatively, if the electrons had been taken away and it had a positive charge, anything that was positive that came close would be repelled. And so the electric field would look something like that. Now, the third and final example would be if you had two plates, one of which had a positive charge and one of which had a negative charge, then anything that's positive here is going to be repelled by the plus and attracted by the minus. So it's going to go that way. So the field lines in this look like that. Now, what if you have something that has more electrons than something else, but both of them are still negatively charged? 
Now we have a way of measuring the amount of charge on something, and we measure charge in coulombs, which is a capital C. So charge is measured in coulombs, and we use the letter Q for charge. Q is the letter that we use in the equations for charge, but C is the unit, coulombs. Now there are two types of material that we need to talk about here, and those are conductors and insulators. Okay, a conductor is something that the charge can move through easily. So if you have a metal bar and you have some negative charge here, some electrons, then they can move through a metal bar very easily because metal has free electrons and the electrons can move around within the metal very easily. So a metal is a very good conductor because the electrons can move freely inside the material. An insulator, like my plastic rod here, an insulator, the electrons cannot move freely. And so they are held in place. And so an insulator does not conduct electricity. Charge cannot move through an insulator. And so they do not conduct electricity. And an example of that is plastic. So out of all that, what do you need to know for your GCSE? Well, you need to know that like charges repel and opposite charges attract. You need to know that charge in general is caused, charge on an object is caused by negatively charged electrons moving around. And when electrons leave an object, it gains a positive charge. And when electrons are gained by an object, it gets a negative charge. You also need to know a way of creating that charge, like we did with my plastic rod and my jumper. And finally, you need to be able to draw these three different types of diagrams showing the directions of the force on a positive charge when it comes close to either a point charge, which is this dot in the middle, a charged conducting sphere, which is these ones, or if it comes between two charged plates. You need to know that charge is measured in coulombs, and you need to know that metal is a good conductor because its electrons can move around, and plastic is a good insulator because the electrons are held in place within the material.